Well, hello everyone. Brian here. Just wanted to give you an update on the progress I've made so far. Uh, I've got the got the lights turned out so you can kind of see the initial framing here of the wall. Um, I've got this much done. That's about a pretty close to a 12 foot section there. And I've got my uh, studs in. Um, you know, they, it went in pretty well. The, the hardest part was putting that that plate in up at the top. I had to get it uh, located on the ceiling joist and then also get it equidistant from the wall back here so it was in square. So that took a little figuring, but I got that done. All the joists are screwed in. The bottom plate is screwed into the floor. And what I'm going to work on tonight <clears throat> is this section of wall from this end of uh, where I finished up over to the wall here and you'll notice that the uh, the tricky part about this I don't know how well this shows up but my ceiling has sloped here from uh, close to 10 feet to I don't know maybe 5 down here at the corner so um, I've got to do some calculations and figure out the best way to do this um, <clears throat> You know, the kind of step one here is, is to figure out what the angles are that I need to cut my top plate. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a few minutes. So uh, it's figure out how to cut the top plate on the proper angle. Get the bottom plate in, which is easy. And then each one of these studs will have to be cut and mitered on the top. You know, luckily it's going to be the same angle once I figure it out the whole way down. And then uh, what I'll have to do here is um, on the bottom plate, I'll measure my 16 inch centers and then I'll plumb the studs in there. Um, you know, so that, that's going to be kind of the tricky part is figuring out what the length of those things need to be based upon, you know, 16 inch increments. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this bottom plate and put it in. Uh, that's kind of step one. Step two is um, a vertical stud along the wall over here, uh, and I'll be attaching it um, at the bottom behind the baseboard. There's a plate that runs at the bottom of the drywall, so I'll screw it in there. And there's also a top plate right where the uh, the tapered ceiling starts. There's a double top plate in there, so um, I'm going to do the bottom plate first, then this vertical piece stud over here against the wall, and then I'll figure out um, how to make my uh, angle cuts here and I'm gonna put a stud immediately adjacent to this one so that it can support the top plate up there um, you know at an angle so uh, that's gonna be kinda of step one so it's it's two angles up there an angle on the top plate and an angle on the stud so I will uh, be back shortly alright so that was the easy part uh, I've cut that cut and fit in there and uh, so step one is to make sure that it's square off of this wall. So I've got my framing square in here and lined up. Assuming that my back wall here is square, my uh, plate coming off this wall is square. And I've got it matched up here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this now to the subfloor. And I will come back. So it's always important uh, to charge your power tools before you start working. So you can see mine is now charging over there. I got the screw in about uh, half an inch down there. And so I'm going to have to let that charge for an hour. Luckily, I've got a quick charge uh, charger. So what I thought I'd show you is, oh, hopefully this isn't too close, uh, is how to figure the angle up here on the uh, top plate. So uh, I'll film this, and then I'll have to set the camera down to... Uh, to mark this but anyway um, I've got this little short piece of 2x4 here and what I need to do is put this up behind behind this vertical stud that's here and then uh, just mark a line down there on the inside of this short stud and that'll be my angle for the top piece here and I can do the same thing at the bottom uh, once I get that vertical piece cut and placed in there so but uh, this is where I'm going to start at least right now since I have no 
no battery power, I'm just going to mark this. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. I was trying to get it over here in the light, but that line down there is the angle at which I need to cut my top plate stud. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then um, it'll be ready. I can't attach it because I don't have um, any power in my drill here. So uh, I'm going to do that and uh, get that in place, at least uh, fit, not attached, but fit so I know it's right. And then uh, I'm also going to go ahead and cut my vertical here. So I'll do that. All right, so <clears throat> I went ahead and measured that bottom angle, and uh, one of the things that that my dad taught me years ago is to create when you know when you you can either when you're young you can remember all this stuff but when you're old like me you tend to forget so he always said create a storyboard and you know in this case it is an actual board uh, so what I have there that 78 is the distance that my board needs to be uh, the length rather not the distance and then here on the side is the angle for the top of the board and down here on this end is the angle for the bottom of the board so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and measure this out and cut it, and then we'll take it upstairs and see how well I did. So, the way to test to see whether you've got your saw at the proper angle is to go ahead and put a test cut like an eighth of an inch away from that line. So, you can see that right there. So, I've got my saw set at a pretty good angle there. So, uh, there's no, I don't know what that is, like, 38 degrees or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock my saw in at that angle. And luckily my miter saw has a handle here that you can twist in for when there's no uh, predefined uh, locking area. So as I turn this handle, it'll lock my saw in place. And I may go ahead and run this down here um, one more time just to make sure that I'm good. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Obviously I want two hands for that. So I will Here we are, be back in a minute. Back at the ceiling. And it's pretty darn good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut my full length board now. This is my short storyboard here. So it's fitting right up in there on, on a really good angle. So I will cut the cut the. So uh, as luck would have part. it, it appears that the wall that is already drywall is uh, fairly plumb. That's the bottom angle and I, I did my test cut and it is right on that line so that tells me, oh I know my stud is plumb up there it also tell me, tells me that the, uh, the wall with the drywall on it is plumb as well so I can use my same setting on my saw to cut this bottom angle and the only thing I need to do is measure 78 inches from the top cut which I've already done there. I don't know if you can see that angle cut. But uh, I want to come down here 78 inches from that and that will be the start of the top uh, cut. And, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute All as right, I get so this marked Here's out. my angle on the top and I've got my tape measure hung over the top edge there. And so this this side of the stud here will be against the ceiling. So I come down here to 78 inches and I've put a mark on the top edge. So that will be the back of the board uh, as it rests against the saw in my angle will be like this, more or less. So I'm going to cut that now. Alright, so See good news. There. Here's the bottom. That's a perfect angle. It's maybe an eighth of an inch short or so, if that. It's probably a six, sixteenth actually. I may not have it in square. Let me just move it over here. There we go. That is right on. So, uh, as soon as my drill charge is up, uh, I'm going to put this one in first. So, the way you do this when you're by yourself is if you screw the top end in first, the bottom will fall out, obviously. So, I'm going to screw the bottom end in. As I said, there's a plate right behind the edge of this stud here. So I'll screw the bottom end in, and if the bottom's in, the top can't fall. As you can see here, I'm holding it here at the bottom because of the angle. So I'll be good uh, as soon as my drill charge is up. So I'll be back and show you that later. Okay, so uh, I found another drill, so that's good news. 
So what I need to do first is since I'm going to nail or uh, attach this top plate in without the vertical piece on this end, I need to know what the plumb line is from the right edge of that board up here. So I'm just going to take a level and uh, make uh, line it up with the edge of that board and draw a vertical line straight up here. And then I know when I have the edge of my top plate against that line, I'm plumb. So All I'm right, so I've got next. that line on the wall. I guess you can see that up here. So I will go ahead and uh, attach my Wait, top plate. <laughs> the way you do this, I've got one screw in there, as you can see. And I'm not holding the plate. It's uh, up in there. So what you do is you start this in, the screw in here almost 90 degrees to the board. And then once you get it started in, you can uh, pick up on it and go horizontally, uh, you know, perpendicular to the wall. So that's what I'm going to do now. I almost made a fairly critical error here. And that was that I haven't tied down my base plate yet. And uh, I just went ahead and measured and cut this vertical piece over here. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I'm installing this base plate right over the carpet. And the reason for that is my fear was that if I cut the carpet to get down, to get the base plate down on the subfloor, that the carpet would fray. And that's about a, gosh, I don't know, 15 or 16 foot. Well, yeah, I know exactly how, how long it is. It's 15 feet from here down to the other end of the wall. And my fear was that the carpet would start to unravel and then I wouldn't have to worry about finishing the train room because I'd be dead. Uh, another member of the household would not be pleased with that. So um, what I'm going to have to do, uh, my second drill is now dead. Uh, I've got about 20 minutes left on the charge over there for my driver. So I'm going to go ahead and wait until that's done and then I'll be able to do the, the base plate the uh, end stud here and the top plate and we will do that all right later. so the wall is in that took a little while but uh, wasn't hard to do um, once I got the angle set for the um, you know for the cut it, it was obviously the same for all, all four studs those uh, the first uh, I'm 16 inch on center from the wall over there so I got 16, 16, 16, and then this one here is a little bit close to that uh, vertical stud, but you know, works for me. Um, I've got a stud finder, so when I hang my uh, layout to the back side of that, I'll be able to find my studs. So the other thing that I have to do, which is, um, uh, I don't know if I'll do that. I may, I may just wait until I get all the stud walls built. There's an outlet just on the other side of that wall there. I've got to bring power off of that outlet and run it into this wall so I can get like two outlets on there um, so it'll be in code. I think in, uh, at least here, it's like every, you gotta have an outlet <clears throat> every six feet, I believe. So, um, you know, no further than 12 feet between them or, you know, could possibly be 10 between them. Um, it may be eight. I don't know, but I'll put two of them on this wall uh, Two on this side probably and uh, also two on the other side, you know, I'll just uh, put the boxes back to back and um, You know just run run wire between them so um, You know, I guess that's it for tonight. Um, there's not a whole lot else I can do here uh, It's getting a little bit late and um, over here, in order to get this wall in, I'm going to have to remove that baseboard, which run beh runs behind my uh, TV and stereo and all that mess. So it, I'll have to pull all that out and be able to get behind there. So it'll be a task. Uh, what I may start on next, instead of that, is uh, attaching to the top of this knee wall here up to the ceiling. At least those will be, sorry about that, at least those will be straight studs. Uh, I've got to come down here and make a 90 degree corner, uh, obviously take that trim board off first. And I'm going to have to cut the drywall off the end here <clears throat> of the wall, take the uh, baseboard off there so uh, I can attach directly 
to the stud that's behind there in the knee wall. And I think what I'm going to do, my, uh, my son-in-law actually has a door that matches our panel doors here uh, at his house. He wasn't sure whether it was a 34 or a 36. So um, I'm, uh, I think <clears throat> the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to build that L-shaped wall here uh, first and um, tie it in. Obviously here at the top of the, at the ceiling I'll be good because I'll be coming you know perpendicular to rafters so that'll be great. I'll be able to tie into those and I can tie in there is a uh, stud on that corner obviously the whole way up so I can tie into there not a problem. I'll make the L-shaped wall first and I'll end it probably with a stud that runs on the outside of this knee wall the whole way up to the top plate and then <clears throat> once I get the door measurements from him I'll know how to make uh, how big to make my rough opening here uh, in the end of my wall and so what I may do is um, you know this <laughs> this will work but uh, you know I may build this this wall here and then I'm gonna have a wall coming out here so far uh, I may just build two rectangular walls here once I find out what the rough opening needs to be and then just build a header between them uh, you know since it's just a door you know there's not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of header that I have to put in there uh, as a matter of fact let's check this out I'm going to attic here and I'm thinking it's just a 2x6 header up there so uh, well that's a 2x8 alright then so I'll be putting a 2x8 uh, header across that door uh, which I don't have any of right now so that will be a trip to Lowe's to get a 2x8 just uh, you know 8 footer to create that header um, well you know come to think of it uh, it may be a 10 footer only because uh, what I'm going to do here in this wall is let me back down the stairs uh, coming up here on, on, you know, from this landing I've got an opening here that I think is about 43 inches wide so what I'm going to do is just uh, you can see this wall is pretty darn close to that corner so I'm going to I'm just going to go you know tie into this go vertically across hit that wall at the corner and then put a framed opening here in this wall 43 inches wide but until I get this other wall tied in I don't want to start um, on my wall my other angled trapezoid shaped wall here in the corner until I know exactly how wide it needs to be this piece on here on the floor is going to have to be cut flush with this uh, stud here at the end so um, I, I left it long intentionally because I wasn't sure exactly where this was going to end up but uh, I think we're good here um, I may you know depending upon where this hits I may have to add yet another vertical stud here at the end to meet that wall squarely I mean it's it looks to me like it's dead on so I don't know we'll find out uh, but enough of that for tonight um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, upload what I have and hopefully uh, this was somewhat enjoyable and I hope tomorrow to be able to start on this wall so uh, until then thanks for watching take care